that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knowest whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. I'm going to just speak um, at this prayer meeting for revival on the subject of trusting in the darkness. Just a, just a, a very short word tonight um, before we, we get ready for prayer. You know, on Sunday, I spoke on the subject of, of choices, of having different choices. And we saw on Sunday that, that in our lives, there are some really easy choices to make and there are some really difficult choices. And, and that's the same for, for everybody in the world. Um, there's, all, there's all different circumstances and situations coming to your life that bring, that bring different choices. And we saw that even with really difficult choices, difficult choices that perhaps have big impacts upon our lives, they have big impacts upon other people's lives. We saw that as Christians, we can know the will of God. We can know the right, the right way to go. And that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful thing. You know, we're not just left to our own devices. We're not just trying to make the best choice that we, we can. We can know God's will for our life. And God has a plan for each one of our lives. God has a plan. And we can, through prayer and through the word of God and through God speaking to us, we can know exactly the right choice to make in every situation. And that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful thing. And it's important to know God's will in all our decisions. That being said, you know, there's some people who, who take that too far and, and in everything they say, oh, I need to know God's will. I need to know, are you coming? Oh, I don't, I need to know if it's God's will to come out. I need to know if it's God's will to go to this or to do this. But they never seem to need to know if it's God's will to have their dinner. They never seem to know if it's God's will to, if, if you need dessert or a bit of prayer about that, you know, they just know, they just know instinctively then what they want to do. But, you know, we see that in the big things and the things that really matter, it's important to know, to know God's will for our lives. And it's especially true because, you know, we live in a, we live at times in, in, in difficult times. We live at times when we go through dark times in our lives and it's important to know the right way to go. It's important in the dark times of our lives to, to know that God's with us and to know that, that in this, that, that God's with us in this situation, although it may be difficult, that we know that we're not in this because of something we've done wrong. We're not in this situation because of, of, of the wrong choices we've made. But this is a trial and God's with us. God's with us in this trial. And that, that's really important because sometimes when we go through dark periods in our lives, we can feel isolated. We can feel that, that no one else no one else knows and no one else cares. We can feel very much alone. And sometimes, and that's true, if you are in physical darkness, perhaps you don't see that there are other people not far away from you, but you just see the darkness and you don't see that there's anybody else who cares for you. You don't see anybody else is with you. And it's important to remember in these times that, that God is always with us. And it's important to know that in these situations that we find ourselves in, that we, we still know we're in the will of God, and this is part of the plan of God, and we can trust God and trust God with a confidence that God will, will bring us through that. But in these times, and this will be the first point, there is only two, sometimes we can find ourselves in the darkness, doubts can arise, that's the first point. And when we find ourselves in really difficult times in our lives, um, when we feel the darkness, we can really feel that there can be doubts, doubts about do we know the will of God, doubts about many things in our Christian life. Sometimes we can we can find ourselves in in times in our lives where we even doubt that we're even saved. You know, we start to look at our life and think, am I even saved? Am I even a Christian? You know, could all of this could God really have allowed all this to happen to me if I was truly one of his? And that's something I think we have all at some point in our life had doubts. The devil comes in and says, you're not a Christian. How do you think if God loved you this wouldn't happen to you. If God loved you, you wouldn't do these things. And, that, and these doubts can be, can be very real. They can bring in tremendous fear and they can cause us to, to take our eyes off the Lord and to doubt, to doubt the promises, to doubt the promises that we know that God has given us, to doubt the scriptures that God has, has given us in different situations. And we can feel doubts and uncertainty come in and it feels very, very difficult to know where to go. And it seems very dark. And you know, we saw... On Sunday, when we looked at choices, we saw in the story of David, we saw how David knew God's will and how God had 
tremendously blessed David. We saw how that as a young man, that the prophet Samuel had came to his house and anointed him to be the king. And, and his life would go on from that. He would become the heroes. He would defeat Goliath. Tremendous things would happen in David's life. But in 1 Samuel chapter 27 and verse 1, David says, I will one day perish in the hands of Saul. And here we see this, this man who, was, who knew the will of God and who was greatly blessed by God. But as we saw on, on Sunday, he, had, he was become a fugitive. He had to flee from Saul. And as he, under the, the pressure of the, 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 the persecution of Saul, he finds himself at this moment where he thinks, he doubts he'll ever be king. He doubts all the things that were promised over him. And he starts to think, Saul will get me one day. Saul is going to kill me. This is how my life is going to be. He couldn't in that moment see a better day. He couldn't in that moment see himself being crowned the king and see and bringing the ark back. None of these things were in his mind. All, all he could see was Saul and the persecution and the darkness. And brothers and sisters, as I say, sometimes in the darkness, all we can see is the darkness. We don't see any light and we don't see any hope. And in these times, we must trust the Lord. We must remember what God has promised us. We must remember what God has done for us. But, you know, sometimes when doubts come in, perhaps sometimes we even doubt God. We even doubt God is there for us. We hear, we know the scriptures. People can give us scriptures that say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But you think, well, that's for somebody else because it's not for me because God has forgotten me. And the doubts come in. And again, it's because of the darkness that we the circumstances we're in, it can seem very, very difficult. It seems very, very hard to, to keep our eyes upon the Lord and keep our trust upon the Lord. And you know, one of the greatest prophets, not not one of the greatest prophet who ever lived, had doubts, had grave doubts over the Lord Jesus. And you know I'm talking about John the Baptist and Luke, over in the book of Luke and Luke chapter seven. You know, John the Baptist had been called to herald the arrival of the Lord, to herald the, the arrival of the Messiah. And, you know, we think back to the moment where John the Baptist saw Jesus coming and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God. And John would, would baptize Jesus and he would see the Holy Ghost descend upon Jesus. And in that, John saw all the things that, that he had lived for come to pass. But as we get to Luke chapter 7, John, John is in prison. John is in prison, and John's facing death by this time. Now, I don't think it was particularly the, the death that John feared or caused the doubts, because as a prophet who rebukes, prophets who rebuke sinful kings never last too long, and John knew that his death would, was coming. But perhaps as he sat in that filthy prison, as he sat in the darkness, the doubts were over that he had got it right, that, he, that Jesus actually was the one. The doubts were over. Had he pointed thousands of people in the wrong direction? Had he, had he lived his whole life and his one aim was to, to herald the Messiah? And but what if he got that wrong? What if Jesus wasn't the one? What if he, his life had been in vain and here he, would, here he was now at the end of his life with doubts? And you know, as I say, there can be situations in our lives where we find ourselves in very dark times. And even when we look back on God's promises and we look back on the things that God has done for us and we can say God has done this, we still, we still feel the doubts, we still fear that, we've, that perhaps we've got it wrong. Or perhaps other people who have, who have done other things were right. People who left the church and done other things and people who, whose lives seem to be fine, whose lives haven't fell apart and perhaps the devil comes and says, well, look, you've wasted your life. Maybe you've wasted your life. Maybe you've held on to these promises and you should have let them go a long time and lived your life. And these doubts can come in and it can be and can be very, very real. And in Luke chapter chapter seven, John sends two of the disciples to go and ask Jesus and to ask, Are you the one that we seek or should we look for another? Because somewhere deep down in John, even though he had all of these doubts, something deep within him knew that Jesus was the one. And he just needed to hear one more time before he died from Jesus that he was the one. He just needed to hear those words from Jesus. 
and he sends his disciples on. And, and if we look from verse 18, And John called unto his two disciples and sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look me for another? And when the men were come, he said, Behold, John the Baptist sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or should we look for another? You know, when Jesus was met with that, Jesus never turned round to these two men and says, Go back to that unbeliever, that doubter, John, and tell him, Of course I'm the disciple, of course I'm the Messiah, of course it's me. Tell John he, he needs to, to remember what I've done. And to remember God's goodness, no, Jesus never, never answered them like that. What we read is, in verse 21, And that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. And Jesus said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen, how the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers were cleansed, the deaf heard, and the dead were raised to life, and the poor, the gospel is preached. And you know what, as Jesus done these things, Jesus knew that John would, would think of the prophecies of Isaiah, that prophesied that the Messiah would do all of these things. And Jesus knew that John hearing these things would know, would have that assurance that Jesus was the Messiah, would have the assurance that his life had not been in vain, that he had found the Messiah, that he had pointed people to, to, the, to the right one. And you know, that was the love that Jesus had. The love that Jesus wanted John to have that peace in his heart. Jesus wanted John to, in the, sh in the short time that John had left to live, to know that his life had been spent on the right thing. That he'd done the right thing. And, that, and Jesus knew that this would, would be an encouragement to John. And the, the same is true for us, brothers and sisters. At times we feel that doubt and we feel the fears. And God doesn't come and God, God doesn't hammer us and say, you, oh, you faith, faithless generation. How do you not believe after all I've done? After all the promises, how can you not believe? You know, he comes in love. He comes in love and he encourages us. And, and sometimes he, he gives us another word that reassures us that we have, we have been doing the right thing, that reassures us that the promises will come to pass, to hold on to his promises. And these are important because, you know, as we come to, to pray for revival, it is a very dark day. It's a very dark day. We look all of our, all around us and we see we see so much ungodliness. You know, we live in a world and in a day that is forgotten God. We see in a, a world where all sorts of sins are now are now normal, are now accepted. You know, we see you know in our leaders, our leaders, our first minister, our prime minister. None of our leaders are Christians. None of our leaders look to God. None of our leaders thank God. So we we see that. And all of these, it's a, it's a bleak picture. You know, we see that, that many of the laws that are passed are not in accordance with the word of God. In fact, in many situations, they're, they're against the word of God and against the things of God. So we see that it's a, dark, it's a dark world we live in. On top of that, we have our own, we have our own difficulties at times, our own problems. Perhaps we're in the middle of of that right now and we find ourselves in, in a dark place and we put a smile on our face and we come on to the meeting but inside we know that there's a there's real turmoil and and again when these things happen it's 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 often that doubts will come in and the devil will come in and say hath god said did god really say are you are you really doing the right thing and in these times we just need as the lord encouraged john the baptist to know that the lord will encourage us and the Lord will strengthen our faith. And, and that brings us to the second. And the second point is for decisions. And much like choices, but slightly different. You know, as I said, it's good to know that and the decisions that we have to make, especially when we're in the darkness, you know, it's always easy to make choices and decisions when you can see clearly. Um, if you're ever on a journey and it's during the day, it's, it's always easier to see the signs and it's always easier to see the way you're going. But when you're travelling at night, when you're travelling, maybe it's dark and it's foggy, and you miss the sign and you don't see the sign. It's very hard. Everything looks the same. It's very hard to know. As I say, it's good when in these situations that we can turn to the word of God and we, are, we get a scripture that clearly points the way. It's good when we're in difficult times that we can, we can look to a scripture and, and we get from the word of God and we get from the Lord, everything is going to be all right. And, and that's a tremendous encouragement in these times. But sometimes... We don't always get that scripture. Sometimes we don't always get the signpost that's so clear that we just know this is definitely God's will and everything's going to work out. 
everything's just going to work out in this situation. We just know that this is the Lord and we just know that everything's going to work out, much like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. You know, you know the story for these, these three Hebrews. They were in a dark place. They were in, a, in Babylon. They were in a dark place. And in the midst of the darkness, it got even darker as the command came out to, to worship and to, to bow down to the statue. And in their situation, and this is, I'll just turn it over in Daniel chapter 3. In their situation, they never, had a, they never had a scripture, well, of course, they never had a scripture, but they never had a word from God. They never had something from God that said, listen, everything is going to be all right. Don't worry. Trust me, I'll be with you in the flames. I'll be with you in, the, in this situation. They never, they never had anything like that. All they had was that they knew I can't even think, oh, there's Daniel there. All they had was that they trusted God. I know, we know the story, they were brought before the king, and they were told to bow down, they were told to, to get to that situation, and the words that they, they spoke are, are beautiful words. It's in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 16. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If so be your God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, but if not, they never had any real assurance that God was going to deliver them in that furnace. They never had any word from God that said that everything was going to be okay. But they knew that without that, it didn't make any difference. They were still going to trust the Lord. In the midst of the darkness, they were trusting God. That even if this meant death, then it meant death. Even if this was what was this was what would, was going to happen, then they would still prepare to go through it. And that's a beautiful spirit, brothers and sisters, that we can have. That when things are going wrong, and when we are in the midst of this this dark world, that we can say, you know what? Even although it doesn't seem to work out the way I hoped it would work out, God will get the glory, and I will still trust the Lord. And the same is true over in Esther, as we read. And I'm reading tonight in Esther chapter 4. Esther found herself in a very dark situation. You know, Haman had, had made this plan to kill all the Jews. And as Mordecai came and told Esther of the plan, she didn't have an awful lot of time. She didn't have an awful lot of time to, to consider what to do. She just told the people, she just told Mordecai and, and the others to pray for her. But she knew that she was going before the king. And again, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there was no promise that everything was going to be all right. There was no word that, that, you, that everything's going to turn around, everything's going to work out fine. Because as we see that she goes in and she says, if I perish, I perish. You know, that's a spirit that just says, God, I trust God. And I don't understand particularly why this is happening. I don't even know if it's all going to work out good. You know what? I still trust God. God is first, and God's way is first, and it doesn't matter what happens to me. All that matters is God's glory. All that matters is putting the Lord first. And, and brothers and sisters, as we come to pray for revival tonight, you know, we might be praying tonight, and for some of us, we might live our whole life and never see revival. We may never, but we still prepare to pray for it tonight. Are we still prepared to pray that God will, will send the revival? And it, we might not see it, but it will come. Are we prepared tonight, even in the midst of perhaps our own personal darkness, to say, Lord, I don't understand, and it might not have a fairy tale ending, and it might not work out the way I hoped it would work out, but that doesn't matter. As long as you get the glory, as long, Lord, as your, your name's exalted, I'll still follow you. I'll follow you, whether it means into the flames of the furnace, whether it means further into the darkness. Lord, I still trust you. And that's difficult. Because the devil's in your ear with all the doubts. And if God had said this, why would you be here? And if the devil, if God had loved you, why would you be a slave in Babylon? And if God had loved you, why would he allow you to be now facing the furnace? You know, if you can like, like the three Hebrews say, you know what? I don't understand, but God's in control. I don't understand, but God is good. And as we come to pray for revival, there's many things that will happen. Many laws that get passed, many wicked things that happen. But what we know is this, that God is in control. And that God will get the glory. And that we come tonight to pray. We come tonight to pray in faith that God will be exalted. It doesn't matter what happens to us. All that matters is that God's name is exalted. All that matters is there are people here that's come to pray for revival tonight. Who've come to pray because they believe in God. Because they trust God. So as we come to pray, 
let us pray with faith. You know, sometimes the devil comes to us and says, oh, you'll not pray tonight. Don't you bother praying tonight. Perhaps, you know, since we've come on to Zoom, there's been, there's been tremendous prayer times. There's been people who have prayed who have never prayed before. There's people who have prayed um, regularly now who, who, who never prayed regularly before. And perhaps the devil says, well, don't you bother praying. Don't you pray. Your prayer, will be, your, prayer will, your prayer will be rubbish anyway, so don't pray. You know, just like Esther, she said, if I perish, I perish, but she still was going to go in. And I just pray tonight that you would just, in your heart, say tonight, you know, it doesn't matter the circumstances. She was in a very difficult place, a very difficult place, and perhaps you say, well, my day's not been good. I don't think I'll pray. You know, maybe just like Esther, you'll come tonight and say, you know what, although everything may be going wrong, I'm just still going to come. And if it's, if it's rubbish, then it's rubbish, but I'm going to pray and thank God. And we've got that opportunity tonight to praise the Lord and thank the Lord for, for what he's done and to come to him. And as they brought their request before God, we bring a re request for our nation that God would send a mighty revival, that God would change this land, that we would see Christian leaders, that we would see our, our leaders thanking God, our leaders calling the place to pray. And that seems impossible, but that's what God can do. And that's why we come to pray for revival tonight. Amen.